My name is Deanna Osman, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today on behalf of AMP. We are here today to mourn, to remember, and to commemorate three beautiful souls who have returned to their creator, Leah Barakat and sisters Yusuf and Razan Abu Salha. No incident has hit our hearts as individuals and as a community like these murders. As a community, we've gone through many tragedies, disasters, and trials. However, nothing, no other incident has impacted our community in the manner these three deaths have. The sense of grief Muslim Americans felt following these vicious murders has been overwhelming. So many of us felt that we had so much in common with these inspirational people. We felt like we knew them. Dia, Yusur, and Razan reminded us of our college roommates, our high school friends, our brothers, our sisters, our spouses. They reminded us of ourselves. And we all had the trembling feeling that deep down in our hearts that we could have been in that same situation, that it could have been any one of us, and we would never have expected it. We experience an environment on a day-to-day -day basis where Islamophobia intersects with a, perva a pervasive gun culture. Cultural propaganda in the form of films exacerbates this, glorifying the murder of Muslims. The political right constantly spews misinformation, misrepresenting issues and portraying the characterization of angry Muslims from the Stone Age at war with the free speech, democratic, loving West. Islamophobia is real. It is palpable and there is evidence of its growing presence. From these heinous murders, to the burning of a mosque in Houston, to the beating of a man in a Dearborn grocery store. Ignoring all of these incidents, failing to attribute them to a growing trend will only worsen the problem. These three victims exemplify what it means to be an American and what it means to be a Muslim. They were educated. They were socially responsible. They were humanitarians who were models in every sense of the word. They epitomize the essence of American Islam. And to deny that this crime was based on hate, based on bigotry, based on fear of the other, is to minimize their deaths and to overlook them as an unfortunate accident. According to a report by ABC, Hicks's attorney Robert Maitland said his client had a quote, long-standing issue with parking, saying it has nothing to do with the religious faith of the victims. He said, unfortunately, these victims were there at the wrong time, at the wrong place. Isolated incident was the preferred language of Ripley Rand, the local U.S. attorney, who said that he saw no reason to treat the targeting and assassination of these people as part of a targeted campaign against Muslims, as if a broader conspiracy were needed for his crime to have greater significance. Being in the wrong place at the wrong time indi indicates that they were victims of an unfortunate accident, not murdered in cold blood. But these young Muslims who died at the hands of a killer, must these young Muslims who died at the hands of a killer be portrayed as having been complicit in their own deaths, as being in the wrong place at the wrong time? Dying by being in the wrong place at the wrong time means being the victim of a tragic accident not being intentionally murdered. By refusing to acknowledge the motive behind this act, by refusing to declare, yes, there is an agenda out there, there is a sentiment of unfounded, baseless hatred against Muslims, is to ensure that an act like this could happen again. We cannot allow this to be relegated to an issue over parking, divorced from the killer's ideology or from the victim's identities. In the words of, of journalist Philip Gorovich, who recently wrote an article in The New Yorker, he said, we're being asked to imagine that these killings are a private tragedy, not some big, big public deal, not terrorism, not even like terrorism. We're being told to believe that the vigilante killing of three young Americans is socially and politically meaningless. We're to ignore the systemic problems and the cultural implications. We mourn their loss, but we celebrate their lives and we hope to continue serving humanity in their memory. We cannot let our grief consume us. 
Rather, we must allow it to galvanize our community towards seeking justice. We will not apologize for who we are or what we believe. We refuse to act in anger or fury as Muslims are stereotyped. We will act with understanding, with an awareness of God's greater plan, a plan that we cannot comprehend in our limited consciousness. We will stand steadfast and demand justice, being careful to guard against internalizing the hatred that made a crime like this possible. No one has exemplified this more than the family affected by this loss. The ex brother Fadis told MSNBC's Chris Hayes that the family felt honored that God had tested them with this tragedy because he knew they were strong enough in their faith to handle it. That is what Islam is. Dia Yusur and Razan. We're proud of who you are. As ambassadors for your faith, you were ambassadors for your faith during your lives, and you continue to be ambassadors for your faith even in your deaths. <laughs>